Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen showing the structures of the upper aerodigestive tract and the diagnosis here is diphtheria infection. Let's have a quick overview of the anatomy. And here we have the tongue, the palatine tonsils, the epiglottis, the supraglottic region and the glottis, as well as the upper trachea. There is a membrane here, which is very characteristic of diphtheria infection. What we can see overlying the mucosa of the epiglottis as well as the supraglottic and glottic region is this membrane. It's a little bit hard to appreciate in this specimen because of long-term fixation, but there is a grayish membrane over these laryngeal structures. And this is due to a fibrinopyrulent exudate caused by diphtheria infection. In the fresh specimen, this may appear grayish or yellowish, and scraping this off may result in underlying bleeding. Microscopically, there would be marked acute inflammation or neutrophilic infiltrates, as well as fibrinous exudates. Let's take a look at the pathophysiology of diphtheria infection. Diphtheria is caused by Corynebacterium diphtheriae, which is a gram-positive rot. Currently, the incidence is extremely low worldwide with several thousand cases a year because of widespread vaccination. This organism can spread via respiratory droplets as well as through the skin through exudates. In the respiratory tract, the infection usually occurs in the pharyngeal region. However, it can also less commonly affect the nasal or nasopharynx as well as the larynx, as we saw in this case. What happens is that the bacteria releases this AB toxin, which blocks host cell protein synthesis, which is a very vital function, and therefore this kills the host cells. When the root is through inhalation, the organisms usually proliferate in the upper respiratory tract mucosa, and occasionally they can also seed into the lower airways. So the exotoxin causes mucosal necrosis and ulceration, plus this thick, dense fibrinopyrulent exudate. So grossly, there will be ulceration of the mucosa, but we will usually see this grayish or yellowish fibrinopyrulent heavy membrane that is stuck down to the mucosa in the structures of the pharynx, for example, the tonsils and the nasopharynx, and also sometimes, as we saw in this case, the laryngeal structures. When the membrane sloughs off or if it is scraped off, the underlying tissues will be ulcerated, bleeding, and also swollen due to edema, and this can also potentially lead to airway obstruction and asphyxiation. Hence, in summary, we are looking at an example of diphtheria, and what we can see here is this thick grayish membrane over the mucosal surfaces of the epiglottis, the supraglottis, and the glottis. And if this was scraped off, there would be usually bleeding of the underlying structures. We can also see some degree of swelling of the mucosa and the deeper structures here in the larynx. This specimen is taken from our Virtual Pathology Museum in our online pathology resource path web, and you can register for free. The link is in the video description, and this will allow you to access our entire Virtual Pathology Museum, which contains more than 800 annotated specimens. Thank you.